The Beauty Testimony is the only horse to have ever secured the Federico Tessio and Preakness Stakes double. He changed the lives of many, including that of the man who bred and raised him, trainer Bill Boniface, as well as jockey Donnie Miller Jr. You know, I'm from Maryland, born and raised. Preakness to me is like the Derby is to somebody in Kentucky, so immediately after the fiasco in the bluegrass, this backup plan became the Preakness. It was my understanding that the trainer and the owners were shopping around for a jockey around the United States in order to come in and ride him, but because he was such a long shot, nobody was willing to do it. So I got selected, for lack of a better word, because I was the number one jockey in the state of Maryland. I had a very good year the year before, uh, nationally. So I got them out. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would like to introduce the field for the 108th running of the world famous Preakness Stakes. Number one is deputed testimony owned by Francis P. Sears, trained by J. William Boniface, the jockey Donald Miller Jr. When it rained, you, the, the rail was gold. If you could get to the rail, that was the best spot to be. And I was able to kind of ride that closeness to the rail um, at, throughout the whole race. You know, you always fret about a horse getting away from the gate on his feet. And that was over. What a lot of people don't realize here is Herb McCauley's on the other part of my entry. Right there, Herb lets Donnie through. So as we got towards the quarter pole turning for home, I remember that uh, Chris McCarron was on Desert Wine, who ran in the Derby, and Chris was hanging, like most of the guys were hanging out away from the rail because it was so washed out. And I, and I had a choice to make as we were turning for home. I had Chris in front, a couple guys on the outside of him, whether I try to force my way out around him to the outside of the track or stay inside. And, and I, I, so I decided the last minute to stay inside. Chris didn't catch me in being inside until I was almost halfway past him. We're not halfway past him, but halfway on him. And then he noticed me, but it was too late. He tested me and ran on through and he ended up winning the race by about, I don't think, two and a quarter lengths. Or something. This is when I knew he was home. Because he that close in the stretch that late, they weren't gonna beat him. He held sway the last part. Great race. My sons were picking up their wives and trying to carry them across the muddy racetrack. And, uh, and of course, I turned to Jim. And I said, Jim McKay, I said, we got the money. We're going to party tonight. He had a party for all, you know, his outfit was filming the, the, their Preakness that year. And we went there and uh, he had a little band there and they struck up, he's a jolly good fella when I came walking in with my wife and carrying the woodlawn boss. I gave it to my father that night. And uh, I said, I'll get another one, don't worry about it. So uh, it stayed with him until he passed. To be a local guy winning the Preakness was more important to me than actually winning the Derby. It was a huge feather in my cap. I've had contact with some good horses. But never a horse had more heart than this one. He lived a good long life, as you know. He was a happy horse till the end. He's buried here on the farm.